Guess where we are? We're in England again. In the quaint small city of Morecambe, which is uh, actually part of the Lancaster uh, city ship. City ship, if I got that right. Anyway, it's a beautiful day. The sun is actually out. You can see the mountains in the background. It's the beginning of one of the many Vic Victorian roses, I call it. Staying in one of those quaint, uh, beautiful seaside vistas. Tides out right now. And as you can see, there are the mountains on the Irish Sea. That's the gateway to, to the Lakes District. And uh, I'm going to show you uh, as much as I can of the city that I know very little about. <laughs> There's my full disclaimer for you. I just know that uh, a while ago, this is probably three or four years ago, I was just looking on a map. I had gotten back from a trip to, to Southport. Actually, as far so it was longer than that. It was probably five years ago. And I said to myself, you know, where else can I go besides Southport? And I said, I think I'm going to go farther north. So, here we are. So I'm sure many of you want to see the hustle and bustle of this, uh, of this seaside community. There's a little less hustle than I think the locals would like, but uh, it's very, very lovely. All right, let's get to this. So my plan was to actually keep us near the water the whole time, but I'm sort of into churches and I caught one out of the corner of my eye that I was like, I gotta see this thing. I also realized uh, I might have left my charger cord behind. <laughs> and I'm gonna be out here for a bit. So uh, I kinda kinda kill two birds with one stone if you get my drift. Can someone answer this question for me? Are Jehovah Witnesses everywhere? I'm not trying to be offensive, it's just a question because Everywhere I have filmed in the last three weeks, every single city in Poland, I went to like 12 different ones, and then in Albania where I was, and now in Southport, sorry, uh, not in Southport, in this city, I see them ready to go and they're posted. I've never seen them so much. All right, so this is St. Mary's. Lovely. Lovely, lovely. Let's go in. We'll see if it's open. This is always my favorite thing to do, is to go into different churches in these communities. This one's gorgeous. Beautiful, and the sun is out, so it really helps. There's also another church in the background over there, but uh, this is the one that caught my eye. Oh, nice little side chapel right here. All right, let's take a look. Oh, this is beautiful. not really what I expected. I like the uh, I like the stained glass, the altar area. It's beautiful. A little side altar to Mary. That was a lovely church and not not expected. Right now, I'm cutting behind the town hall with the hope that I was going to try to zigzag over to uh, where I'm staying to get these cords. And I caught out of the corner of my eye this spot right here. Look at this little entrance. It's, it's right on the water. It looks like a little doorway. And I'm telling you, this doorway, it's to a cemetery. Another fan favorite of mine. So let's just have a quick little, quick little break. Wow, this is an old cemetery, the 1800s. Look, in memory of William Besley, 1885. There's such a contrast to what we just saw when we were in Poland um, to the many cemeteries. Well, not the many, but the couple that we did get into. 
So again, it's for me, it's kind of a little bit of culture shock because now I'm seeing the graves that I'm more accustomed to in my native New England in Maine and New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Looks like they haven't mowed in some time or they, maybe they just came through. Ah, and it's at the base of the other church over there. I gotcha. Now this is all making sense. Is that a money sign? It, it can't be a money sign. I see several of them. It, it must be faded. It must be like a Jerusalem cross is what I think it is. Because otherwise, that's <laughs> really funny. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's part of a cross that faded. One of my favorite memories actually was when I was in the city of Posan. I'm sure I mispronounced it. But, uh, and I was at the old war cemetery and I came across the British section of it from World War II. Because you see all this foreignness and then these like familiar names. It felt like I was part of home. Look at this lovely tree right here. Beautiful shade it provides for this resting area for these people. I don't know how they did this, but does this look like it was a sculpture? Or someone came in here and carved it up a little bit? <laughs> yeah, someone did something. Wow. Just hoping to this gets us out of here. Look at these old English alleyways. <laughs> no clue where I am. <laughs> All right. All right, well, we are right back to it after our little detour. And uh, it's interesting being out and about today with the sun finally out. I guess it's rained here for days. Uh, it seems that this is a uh, very busy day. Lots of people out and about. But with the school holidays still only a few days away, we'll say uh, even though where I'm staying, they said this is about as busy as it gets. It could get busier. But I imagine compared to like other times that, um, you know, to years past when they had both the piers still here. This is back in the 70s. I think it was 1977, one of the piers burned down and some other aspects that kind of took away from the tourism factor here, uh, which is a shame. But as someone who likes sleepy towns, yeah, it's also a score for me. And while you do have some places that are for rent, you also have, um, I'd say, a good variety of hairstylists, beauty um, places, little shopping stores that are lined throughout this uh, stretch. All the way to the, uh, to say the Grand Hotel, but I forget what it's called, to be honest. We're passing the bookstore now. I don't think I've ever seen this. This is new. So where they actually have like books outside. Place ready to be grabbed. I'm still not used to looking to my left and right here. One thing that reminds me of Southport that I noticed immediately when I got here last night wasn't necessarily the cafes, but these arcade amusement games. They have several of them, including Pleasureland. And with our water view over there, which we'll jump back to in a few minutes, there's the Clock Tower Cafe that has donuts. And, you know, I'm pretty nice. All right, let's go this way. Trust me, we're gonna get our fill of like the water, but we might as well see what like the old town looks like, as I like to call it. Huh, it's pretty. I love quaint towns like this. I know, I, I think quaint is the uh, word of the day. Maybe I should say bijou. Is that, is that a better word choice? 
<laughs> oh, they have Masons. Ah! Now that's interesting. I always thought the Masons was an American thing. So the Masons actually came from here. I should have known better. Should have known better. And you see all these lights overhead? I'm sure during the holiday season that this is like a really, really cute street. One of the toughest things on, uh, you know, like walking tours when you're trying to get, get a feel for like an area is it's not possible to walk every street. I mean, some people do it. Then you get like a three hour long vlog. And I just like to do like a snippet with commentary. And just kind of see like, what can we find? Look at this right here. Interesting. Now, if I remember right over there, it's a mall. Because I went to Pound Town, Pound Land, I don't know, one of those this morning. It's funny, I'm taking it all in, so it's sort of like uh, less to talk about. Now, I don't know if this was used in the bay as I've never seen the uh, TV show but I understand that there was some filming done right around this area actually in the whole community look at that building right there isn't that beautiful I love it I like the I like the look actually the whole this whole downtown is very 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 pretty to me and while I could film more of it <laughs> There's something about filming around people, and you'd think that it'd be easier when I'm in a place that uh, I can speak the language, because I can say, hey, I'm just doing a vlog, but it just makes me more uncomfortable. So we got Snappy Land right there, and then here's the Royal Bar and Shaker, the Royal Hotel. This is actually where I stayed last night. I'll show you what I had for breakfast this morning and uh, some of the views. So we are in our hotel right now and this is uh, the inside of the restaurant I ate a great dinner there last night and now I'm just waiting for my uh, eggs benedict which will go right here having tea to in, in the meantime and here it is the eggs benedict with smoked salmon as you can see uh, I didn't like it very much ha 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 And I believe that's where the, uh, I don't know, that's, I think the first episode of the Bay, there were scenes from that. That's what my, uh, that's what I was told this morning. Look at these flowers. Wow. See, where I'm from, in Maine, we'd still be waiting for the flowers to come up in the middle of July. Yeah, true story. I think this person's name, the statue, his name is Eric. I think. I think this is Eric. And I don't really know his whole story, but he looks like a, a pleasant fellow. <laughs> this was unveiled by uh, the Queen back in uh, 1999. Hey, buddy. Beautiful spot. Love your town. Love your town. See you later. When I arrived yesterday, the water was up here, so I got a whole different vantage point because the tide was was in. It's beautiful both ways. Although for filming purposes, you know, I think there's something said about when the water is in, it just kind of adds more to the uh, scene. <laughs> I wonder if uh, other, you know, video people would agree. It's amazing the difference, like right now it's around 11.30, and it's amazing the difference of number of people that are outside right now. The lovely ice cream place right there but look at the crown hotel they like it and i like this street or should i say i love this street oh. i don't think many of my viewers realize that i'm a big fan of the victorian era i actually took a course on it when i was in college part of my history degree and uh you think I would be able to just spew off names right now? What was it Gladstone and Disraeli? Learning about them, and of course Queen Victoria. But huh, what a lovely town! 
it's definitely not as um, commercialized as uh, Southport and Blackpool. I think it lost that opportunity years ago. I will say this though, there are plenty of people that are out. Granted though, uh, demographically speaking, they're um, just a little bit more seasoned than I am. Now this, if I remember right, I want to call it the Winter Palace. It's not, maybe the Winter Garden. <laughs> it's a lovely building, look at that. Okay, it's the Winter Garden. And that looks like something I'd love to go explore and see what it looks like inside. But if I can't, I'll take Pleasure Land. Home of pleasure. And this is so funny. So this morning when I was running, this wasn't mowed. It's like they knew that I was filming and they're like, ah, oh, crap. We got to present the town in, in, in its best light. Got to do it, guys. Got to do it. And we got a little carnival action over here, down below. During the carnivals. Almost said carny, I don't know why. It's kind of cool, actually. But you know, just as important as those sites is looking at these monuments. This is from World War I and World War II, the Great War, the one they thought would end all wars, and then we got this. So all the people from this, this little hamlet who lost their lives with the lion up front. Now I don't know if you can see straight ahead. Um, I was gonna wait a little bit longer for, for us to cut in, but it's interesting, like you got like the graffiti on the side, looks like shops that are closed. It's really a shame. And I get it, that's the contrast that we have. Uh, I'm not oblivious to watching like Backpacker Ben and Bald and Bankrupt and seeing their adventures here in the UK. But I've seen it firsthand myself, just out for walks in this part of the country. The lovely day is turning out to be. So right here, on our right. I'll put in the uh, comments what this building is called, but they uh, it's they've redone the hotel and they're and they have suggested well they don't suggest they said you should make reservations and come out for tea. But it is lovely, absolutely lovely. I've seen photographs uh, of what it looks like when the storms come in. So there's the hotel. We got our beach for hit very, 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 very shortly. So if you turn right, you pass these security guards, all these seagulls, and you can take this, um, I basically, we call this like a wharf. I wonder if the old pier was, okay, this is the stone jetty, actually, if we want to go the official terms. It's where people put in their boats. Someone brought their boat down. I'm like, dude, it looks a little early. A little early. I mean, what do you guys think? <laughs> okay, I, I gotta tell you a story. So, that boat right there is called a scallywag. And if you're British, you know what scallywag. Well, actually, no, we, we can't really assume that actually. I just remembered that. So, I had a student several, several years ago. And I remember we were, I was teaching, maybe it was like an English class. And uh, <laughs> I called him a scallywag, just because it was the first word that came to my mind when we were doing something in class. And we had a good little laugh about it. And then, and then I said, you know what? I've never really looked up what the word scallywag meant. And then when I looked it up, I realized I would never call him that again. You should look it up. You should. And may it be a lesson to you to not use uh, vocabulary you don't know the meanings of. At least if you're a teacher. Look at this view. It is just a beautiful, picture-perfect day. And I think this is why everyone loves coming out when the sun magically shows up. <laughs> and uh, here is the town protector. I'm sure he has a name. Yeah, 
Mr. Siegel. I guess everyone needs to have a, a cool coat of arms. I wonder if the gull has shown up on it. I think my nephew actually goes to a school that's the, uh, their mascot is the seagull. Go figure, right? So there's a cafe right here, right on the post. Uh, we, are, we only walked out here because I wanted to show you the lighthouse. I don't know if it's operational or not. I know though that when I was out here this morning, I was like, oh, that's lovely. Always a fan of lighthouses. Look at the drastic tides. And you know what, when I say drastic, this is nothing though compared to Southport. Southport's like a, goes out and feels like for like a mile. But look at that. If you can see that windmill way in back, that's where I'm actually shooting for. It's about two and a half miles away. Well, now, now it's like two miles away. But this is all the same, this is all the same town. Then you got, again, the hotel in the background over there. Absolutely lovely. And this is why my mom said that I lack common sense at times. You can probably see the uh, truck bringing the boat over now. And of course, they're going to be able to drive it into the water. I, you know, sometimes I'm just an idiot. I think I just assume that because it's muddy and stuff like that, they're going to get stuck. But of course, they just back it right in, put the boat in the water, and then do their thing. <laughs> well done, Scallywag crew. Well done. So this morning, there was a fisherman right here, right on this spot. And it was like 5.30 in the morning, cranking his music. And it was funny because, you know, he had the whole place to, him, to himself. And now, <laughs> he probably wouldn't want to be here. What a beautiful, beautiful spot. This is known as Trafalgar. Trafalgar, I always mispronounce this word, point. It's named in recognition of the long association between the people of, of Morecambe and of Lancaster and the submarine, the HMS Trafalgar, which was decommissioned in the 4th of December, 2009. Now, for you historians out there, you might remember that name, not the name of the vessel, but the name of the, of the battle. It was the turning point, really, in the, in, was it the War of 1812? Or the Napoleonic Wars? One of the two. I was getting confused. All right, guys. So here we go. Let's 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 take in our view and love it for all that it is. I don't think you could ask for a more picture perfect day to be able to film. So, here's a deep question for you: Is it a beach day if you have to walk a mile to get to the water? Or can you still count it if you're like, I don't know, over this way? Deep thoughts here. And uh, here's that beautiful waterfront hotel. Get your tea here. So we've come down from the uh, stony wherever we just were. We're right, we've got the train station, the original train station right there. The nice wildflowers, but uh, I found this right here. This little thing right here to Elfie Moser. So, I guess a little child that passed back in 2020. And it's interesting though, because you have some stones down here that say like, miss you lots. And then there's other ones that say you have blood on your hands. So I'm wondering as a non-local, what the story is behind this situation. Regardless, sorry for their loss. And while I know you guys want to go to the Aldi to see what that's all about, look at this. This is the original train station right here. Look at this beauty. Go try this again. Look at this beauty. <laughs> I'm still confused about what side of the road the cars are coming from. So. The train used to come. The train used to come this far out. Now you actually have to go over maybe like a few blocks that way um, to catch the train to go back to Lancaster proper. 
Let's see what it looks like inside. This is the platform. Well, this is like my luck with churches sometimes. So you can't really get in right now. It's all locked up. I mean, if you want to go to the cafe right here or whatever, the restaurant, you can do that. But I wanted to see the inside to see what it looked like from an architectural aspect. But it's a music venue, so that's not going to happen. I don't know what it is about this part of England. I have not seen a McDonald's yet. I have only seen KFC and Burger King. I mean, not that I'm complaining. I'm just pointing out. It's an observation that it seemed like when I was in Poland, there was a McDonald's quite frequently. I know the locals aren't going to like this, but uh, boy, I wish it was colder and darker today. The sun's starting to bake the heck out of me. Thankfully, I put some sunscreen on like any responsible person. Whew. So now we're going to the west side of town. West side of town. We're going to see it all. See it all. Actually, I have to walk this way because I'm going to a church. For those people that want to stay <laughs> for the whole thing. It's only two miles from here. Well, uh, we're sitting on the water now with the Aldi in the background. And I wasn't kidding, I went in there, I got me two bananas, and then I got a sandwich, a uh, cheddar cheese plowman sandwich with a pickle for only two pound and 17 cents. At the airport yesterday, this was 5.50 I think, and you can mix and match it with a drink and with like, uh, with a snack. But the point is, I love the fact that I found something I could just get a quick little bite, a quick little sandwich here that's not 15 bucks like at the airport back in the States. Now granted, I'm out in the, you know, the northern part of England, but I'm just trying to show you. You can save some, this is for my travelers, you can save some money and, you know, save it for your sweets in a bit. We're out here, guys. And when I say we're out here, I mean, look at this. I have found all the worms. Well, actually, I always get confused. Well, no, these are all worms, right? Look at this, look at these. She reminds me of Lubeck. Look at this, this entire spot. Not that that's why I'm out here. It's actually not the reason why I'm out here. I just wanted to uh, walk on the beach. <laughs> like any good kid from from New Hampshire and Maine this is what we do we go on the beach because we don't have sand like this Ooh, beautiful huh oh and that uh, cheddar plowman sandwich wow actually that cheddar cheese like I didn't think it'd be much I think it's my favorite sandwich I've had so far. Yesterday, I've had the chicken salad one, and now I've had the cheddar one, and I will have to say the cheddar one I prefer. I'm kind of scared to get the prawn one. Maybe someone in the comments can tell me whether the prawn one's worth it, and then I will try it. It's glorious. This also reminds me, I know, I keep using Southport, but I can't help it, guys, because that's really, aside from London, okay, I've been to London once. I've been, I've flown in a lot more than that, but actually been inside the city. I've been in Southport twice, and now this is my first time here. But when I was in Southport, and I, I didn't even see the water. Like, the water was so far out, you felt like you were in the middle of a desert. And I, <laughs> I did these sequences that I thought was really funny. That it's like, where I would just, you would just follow my, uh, my, follow my, my footprints. In fact, I might still have that short. Let me see. There's the Wellington. Oh. And then look at this cute street right here. You can see the Seacrest. But do you guys see the sign? This is more importantly. This is the, uh, this is the middle school teacher in me. Humps for quarter for three quarters mile. Humps. What, what do you mean by humps? 
I like this street. I like the different names and places. This uh, stranger danger van right here is, rem is hiding us from Mr. Santa. That's that's peculiar, peculiar, isn't it? Yes. Ah, uh, here we go. Here's Mr. Santa. It looks kind of cute, actually. But I won't ruin it for you. You need to go in yourself. Okay. I'm about to jaywalk, guys. I've just seen the coolest name for a pizza restaurant ever. I know I shouldn't, but I can't help it. You'll see why. So, I like... So, the west side of town definitely has a little bit of different energy to it. It's still very quaint, very, very pretty. But look at this. Oh, my God. Who would have thought? You know, if you're going to name a pizzeria, you can't go wrong with Gizmo's Pizzeria. Right here, Gizmo's Pizzeria. My question is, their hours are 4 p.m. to late. You do know what happens after midnight, right? And I have noticed this. This town has a lot of 80s and 90s references. So, like, it's funny. So, you got Gizmos right there. Okay? And there's Gizmos. But then right across the street, not to be outdone, there's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle right there. Same pizza time. Well played, guys. Well played. Now, my mom will disown me if I don't show this just because I know she's a fan. But look at this. You have an old school fish and chips restaurant right, right next to the pizza places. I originally had looked at some places to stay over here, um, like different um, hotels and stuff like that. And uh, it, it's cool how like each section of the city has just different energy, different vibes. I like both. I definitely like both. It's interesting though, you know, we, we then turn and then you see like a building like this where it needs some love. And then this one here, I caught this while running this morning. And from the front, it looks like a building how like in like the early 1900s, late 1800s, it would have been in its, uh, in its heyday. Now, I apologize, the angle's obviously poor. <laughs> I think this is a music venue now. We'll cross the street. I'll give it some love so you can really see. So there's a different vantage point of the building. So I guess it's a concert venue or a club or something now, but I'm trying to imagine it back in its heyday. Maybe it was like a ballroom or something like that. I don't know. Someone should put in the comments what it is for me so I can get a feel. And now this, I forget what this is. Maybe this is the middle part of town. There's so many different side streets I want to explore down that way. and uh, Just not enough time, guys. Not enough time. I might have to, okay, this is the West End Gardens. I might just have to come back and spend a week. Take a writing holiday here. Now that sounds like a plan. One of the things I was thinking about this morning when I was running is how all of these homes that are on the water, how, how you know, how you have to really invest in the care and maintenance of these with the wind, the water, the salt. But look at their view. That is nothing to frown upon, that's for sure. And someone was ingenious and decided to set this up. Quick, take a picture. By the way, that, that big metal thing that we walked by, it's called the West, it's the label for the West End Gardens. So look at that, that, okay, I take it back. I shouldn't have been cheeky. This is cool. That is cool, actually, that's props. Props, guys. <laughs> That is pretty, pretty cool. All right. Now, what next? What next? I kind of have this rule, or it's a rule that I try to follow, and that is I don't use my cell phone to tell me where I am. I just walk around and see what I discover, what shows up. And look at this beautiful church right here. That also looks like it's under repair for something. What a shame. 
Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just the building next to it. Should see if we can get in. I'm like 100% sure that that's someone's home now. With some interesting, this Veranda West Street, maybe you guys can catch it out of the corner of your eye. Interesting little like homes on the side. One more stretch of these houses here of I call them row houses but with some color uh, until the houses these go away and you actually get kind of more of your traditional like homes But then again, when I mean more traditional homes, I mean like uh, single family homes that aren't townhouses, because I'd classify these all as townhouses. Well, we still have a little bit more ways to go for where uh, my next destination is, so I'm just going to leave you guys here. I hope you enjoyed the uh, walking tour and uh, enjoyed what I could show you of this city. So uh, you should come check it out for yourself. All right, guys. Until next time. Peace.